two major parties have started marketing their positions on the ballot paper already. So the battle lines have been drawn and the stage is set for a heated contest between 12 candidates in the December 7 polls. The campaign has taken another twist with the balloting organized yesterday by the Electoral Commission. The parties are now giving an interpretation to their position on the ballot paper and designing messages that will make it easier for the electorate to cast their ballot for them. The MPP's election 2020 campaign manager, Peter McMeno, is joining us via Zoom for a conversation on their number one placement. Thank you very much for your time, uh, Mr. McMeno. It's been a while. I hope you're doing good. I'm good, Araba. <laughs> good to hear I'm that. I'm doing well. All right. So far, so good. Nice. Okay, so we see that you've already started marketing the number one sport. In fact, social media is awash with, you know, all sorts of things revolving around that particular number, including a song. Uh, does this raise your confidence even further? Well, uh, it does. It does. Because it makes our marketing quite easier. It makes our candidate, who is also well known by close to 99.9% .9 of the electorate, and the party, the brand, the, the, the elephant, the brand, which is also well known by the electorate by about 99.8%, quite easy to market. So we are comfortable and it makes our marketing quite easier. Mm. When you say it makes your marketing quite easy, are you suggesting that it will be easier for the electorate to locate uh, who your presidential candidate is and vote for him? And, uh, you know, that erases any you know, possibility of people wrongly, um, you know, thumbprinting or thumbprinting the wrong person. Exactly so, because if you look into the past results from the Electoral Commission, rejected votes has been an issue. So if your placement is in a location like number one, it makes it easier for the voters to identify you or your brand, your party's brand, and then fix their thumb on it such that it is expected that rejected will be minimized as far as possible and then you will get the votes that was expected to be voted for you so for us we believe strongly that the dummy ballot paper we are going to do and take it across the length and breadth of the country will minimize the rejected votes that hitherto has been going against the new patriotic party Okay, just to clarify, you're going to do a dummy and go around the country campaigning so that you can actually demonstrate to the electorate who they should be voting for. Is that right? Exactly so. Exactly so. Right. Okay. So in 2008, you had the incumbency advantage. You were a straw I remember, just as it will be this coming uh, December. But you couldn't win. So what will be different this year? Well... Well, if you, if you go through the statistics of 2008, we won the first round with a margin of over 100,000. Mm. Okay? We won the first round with a margin of 100,000. And we were beaten in the second round with a margin of less, about 40,000. So, so, so and, and, and with a margin of 40,000, the rejected votes were more than 40,000. So the rejected votes is important. The way people are educated to vote, the way people know your brand, and our candidate, who is also the president of the republic, is very well known. And our brand, the party's logo, the new patriotic party logo of um, uh, the Osuno, the elephant, is also well known. And the placement, the number one, makes it quite easier for the electorate to know or find where you are placed on the ballot. And it makes it easier and makes it uh, 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 less cumbersome so that people would vote easily and readily and reduce the number of rejected ballots. Mm, I see. So um, beyond the fact that it makes it easier to market your candidate, 
Is there any other special significance of holding the number one spot? Well, we are saying that number one means you are going to get number one on the result sheet. We are going to, in, in 20, 2016, we were on number five. Nevertheless, because the brand was popular, the policies and the manifestos that we put across to the good people of Ghana touched their hearts. They voted, they were able to find us even at number five and gave us an overwhelming victory never seen in the annals of elections in this country. Over one point something million votes extra. So now that we are in number one, and the good works that the Nana, the Dankwa, and Baumia government have done for the good people of Ghana, we strongly believe that the rejected votes will come down, and then our votes will increase beyond what we got in 2016, because our performance has been quite good, extraordinary, mm. in all areas, digital, education, uh, planting for food and jobs, what have you. That's interesting, though, because there are some pundits who say that uh, the proximity of the placement uh, of the number one, which is uh, Nana Adodankwe Kufuado, and number two, which is John Dramani Mahama, there might be some, you know, a conflict for electorates, those who are not really informed, if I should call it that way. So um, don't you harbor any fears that, you know, um, there might be spoiled ballots because people who may intend to vote for your candidate might accidentally vote for the number two? No, no, because we have, apart from everything, we have a strong army of volunteers on the ground. And they are going with the dummy ballot. And the brand is also well known already. Well known, well marketed, well known already. So we don't anticipate anything like that at all. Also, the Electoral Commission in 2016 were able to identify the positions clearly from each other with a thick mark between parties. There was a thick mark that distinguished parties from each other. And we believe they are going to do the same for this upcoming elections. Mm -hmm. So we do not anticipate anybody going to vote for MPP going down to vote for NDC, not at all. And the symbols are different. Mm, right. How can how can how can an umbrella replace a, 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 an elephant? I mean, it's obviously not the case. Right, M Mr. Lakmenu, uh, let's talk about yesterday's balloting process. The NDC raised some concerns about the process itself, and they were concerned that it was not as transparent as they expected it to be. What are your thoughts on how the process played out? The process, I have witnessed this process, I think this is about the third or fourth time, and I've taken part in it. And I think it went the same way. But what, what I did not understand what NDC was asking for. You see, we want you to pick randomly a number which is inside a ball. If the EC is to open up and show you how they are placing the numbers in the ball, then, then it, the, the objective of random picking will be defeated. The objective is for parties to randomly pick at the first instance, and that will give you a position to pick at the second instance or the final uh, instance. So if the EC is to come in the open with all the political parties and all the candidates seated, and there in the glare eyes of everybody, mark the numbers on the sheets and place it in the balls. Everybody will see and know which ball he should be looking for. So it would defeat the aim of the exercise. So right. they got it wrong. Mm. They got it wrong. Right. Sometimes they just want to make noise because in 2016, they were there when the same process that was done yesterday was, was done. So it's a, it's a replicate of what uh, happened in 2016.
I don't understand why they were complaining. They just want to make noise. <laughs> All right. Uh, away from the balloting process, let's talk about the campaign proper. How is the campaign going? I mean, right now we're seeing the president, the vice president, uh, the second lady, and uh, in some instances, the first lady, you know, crisscrossing parts of the city and then the country, you know, um, you know, trying to win the hearts and minds of people. How is your campaign going? You have just described the campaign. Our campaign is to win the hearts and minds of the people. And when we touch their, their hearts, then certainly they'll vote for you. So we have our ground troops who are doing the canvassing. We are, you know, all the polling stations, we have executives, we have a massive volunteers, uh, loyal ladies, etc., who are also on the ground, visiting homes, houses, saloons, etc. And they're going with the local manifesto, the things we have done locally, and then the lo things we have done nationally. So we are doing both, as I would say, the air and ground uh, 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 work. And I'm interested in so the door-to-door the, the, the door -door campaign that, you know, uh, many of you have resorted to now because obviously uh, the COVID protocols will not permit you to, you know, have open air rallies. So how is that going? Is that effective? Is that giving you the desired outcome? Well, in 2016, we came up with a retail campaign, which was the door-to-door, -door because you see, throughout globally, the best way of reaching a voter is direct contact. So the door-to-door -door gives you an opportunity to meet the voter directly so that he is also able to ask questions for you to respond. And so far, it paid off very well in 2016. That's why NDC is copying us. And now they are saying they are also going to do a retail campaign, something we started in 2016. So we are the masters of the game, and we are going to continue. And we have the men, the human resource, to undertake that task. All right. Uh, we'll have to leave it here. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, that's head of the MPP campaign, uh, Peter McMeno, there uh, in that conversation with me.